Let's talk about TikTok and the US presidential election. The app has a lot of people talking and dancing, lip syncing, and lately even campaigning. Please go vote when November come around so we can get him out of here. All aboard the train, Trump 2020. Owned by a company in China, TikTok has 800 million users worldwide, and it's growing fast. But there are those who see it as a threat. We may be banning TikTok. We are looking at a lot of alternatives. So why is TikTok getting all this attention? Is our privacy at risk? And does this app, like other social media platforms, have the potential to influence the US election? Let's be clear, Facebook is still the biggest and most valuable social media company in the world. But there's a new kid on the block. TikTok's been around for only three years and it's blowing up, especially in America. Carol Baskin, killed her husband, whacked him. TikTok makes it easy to upload videos, add effects, choose music, switch up recording speeds, you can even change what you look like. But it's even easier to just get lost in it. This app is essentially an endless scroll of punchy videos that are a maximum 60 seconds long. It's also got its own TikTok celebrities. I'm a savage. Yeah. A Chinese company called ByteDance launched TikTok in 2017. Real videos that make your day. It later bought the popular Silicon Valley startup Musical.ly for a billion dollars and merged the two. Today, TikTok is worth more than 75 billion. It's got an American CEO, but it's still Chinese owned. In the US especially, it's experienced such a rapid growth. Last statistics I saw was that the year on year growth was 375%. Is huge. Here's how huge. In the first three months of the year, TikTok was downloaded more than 300 million times globally. That's a record. But in terms of overall monthly active users, it's still behind Facebook's more than 2 billion, but way ahead of Twitter and Snapchat. And a lot of TikTok's users are young. Around 40% are between 16 and 24. Ahead of a presidential election, that's millions of potential new votes. And what was once seen as just a fun app is actually getting more political. I'm a vote, Trump 2020, Trump 2020. I'll figure out a vote for Joe Biden. It's really a platform that allows for a very wide array of political expression. So yes, there's the activist content, but there's also a lot of conservative political content. And it's gone beyond just posting political views. In the last year, TikTok has demonstrated its power to mobilize. Hashtags help. They make TikTok content searchable and easier to go viral. That's what happened in May during the protests over the killing of George Floyd by police. TikTokers have also been credited with using the app to pull off some pretty big pranks. Just before a Trump rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma, thousands of Korean pop music fans had the idea of reserving free tickets without showing up. And the message went viral on TikTok. I recommend all of those of us that want to see this 19,000 seat auditorium barely filled or completely empty, go reserve tickets now and leave him standing there alone on the stage. What do you say? It definitely looked like they pulled it off. But the Trump campaign said TikTokers and K-pop fans weren't the reason though they did acknowledge thousands of fake phone numbers were registered. Generation Z, et cetera, are wielding social media and mobilizing it. And I think part of it is just they have been on social media pretty much their entire lives. Some argue that these types of political movements are able to snowball because TikTok feeds you what you want to see and hear. The algorithm collects mountains of data on videos you like and users you follow, and it uses that data to create TikTok's homepage that's called For You. It's a hyper-personalized loop of videos it thinks you might like. You as a company, you want a user to spend as much time on your platform as possible. And the way you do that is you create an experience that is enhanced by your own likes. But once a social media platform gets this popular, people notice its power, starting with that echo chamber and its potential to perpetuate hateful or inaccurate content. The prejudices, the sort of uh, perpetuation of conspiracy theories, the online space, the way to amplify it. And that's not just a problem for TikTok. 
That was the very criticism leveled against Facebook in 2016 during the last presidential election. The big scandal for TikTok so far, though, has been about security. Last year, Checkpoint Research said it had found ways hackers could tamper with TikTok accounts by, for example, making private content public. The US military has even ordered its personnel to delete the app. It is not just the Trump campaign uh, or the Trump White House that is making this claim. Other companies have asked their employees to do similar things. TikTok says it's fixed the security issues, but it's got other problems. US officials have been investigating TikTok because even though it's an American operation, it's owned by a Chinese company. And Chinese companies, by law, can't be forced to hand over personal data to the government. Now, TikTok denies all of this and insists the data is private, secure, and stored on servers in the US. But the Trump administration is now considering a ban. The Trump campaign even took out Facebook ads to get supporters to sign a petition. Would you recommend that people download that up on their phones uh, tonight, tomorrow, anytime uh, currently? Only if you want your private information in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. Now, it's unclear if the U.S. can actually ban the app or if there's truth to reports that a U.S. company is trying to buy TikTok, which would sever Chinese control. But the prospect of a ban was enough to get its users riled up. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence after Tulsa was a flop. Out of the blue, now suddenly you want to go ahead and ban TikTok? A bunch of TikTokers flooded the Trump campaign's mobile app with bad reviews. If an app gets underneath one star, Apple will actually delete the app. So let's delete that thing. So aside from all the pranks, the hype, and the concerns, TikTok's expected to be a real player in this election. Because while older Americans in swing states won Trump the presidency in 2016, this year there are many more young voters. A third of the electorate are millennials, and some studies suggest they tend to skew Democrat. That's a lot of votes, if they show up, that is. We know traditionally that youth voters haven't turned out in numbers that we'd like, but we also know that this generation of people is very politically and socially active. Some think it could be an important tool to mobilize voters, but there's no question that when it comes to this presidential race, Facebook is still the real battleground. It's simply a bigger platform with more users, and that means it has access to more personal information. The company makes money from all that data, which we give up for free. And Facebook sells it to advertisers who tailor those ads to each of us. It's called micro-targeting. The issue with Facebook is keeping that data secure so it's not misused. That's what happened the last time around. In 2018, it was revealed that the now defunct political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica had stolen the data of millions of Facebook users. That data was used to create psychological profiles, target US swing voters, and then attempt to manipulate them for the then presidential candidate Donald Trump during the 2016 election. It got the head of Facebook in hot water at the time. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility and that was a big mistake. Facebook now says it's got better safeguards for our data, and it's changing its settings so that users can see fewer political ads. We just have to manually opt out. It also says it's cracking down on foreign interference. Facebook has, in recent months, taken down a very high number of networks and operations that were led by um, different states, from Iran to, to Russia. As for TikTok, it's also facing allegations of foreign interference, something both TikTok and the Chinese government deny. So what about misinformation? Content that's just plain wrong. Ahead of the elections, the pressure is piling on social media companies to do more, to step in and take down fake or misleading posts, Facebook's facing most of the heat, but TikTok is feeling it too. The company says it's launching what it calls a transparency center in California to moderate content. It's blocked a bunch of hashtags linked to the QAnon conspiracy movement, and it's also been taking down inaccurate videos, like this one of Joe Biden appearing to endorse Trump. We can only reelect Donald Trump. The president even tweeted it. But here's what Biden actually said. Excuse me, we can only re-elect Donald Trump. 
if in fact we get engaged in this circular firing squad here. So we know that TikTok is already starting to experience some of the problems that older social networks are. And the more TikTok grows and the closer we get to November, the more the company finds itself in the middle of a debate over how much social platforms should police content. I think it's genuinely difficult for, for Facebook and for other social media platforms to strike the right chord. On the one hand, they have this imperative to curb the spread of misinformation on the platform, and that entails removing problematic content. Uh, but when they do that, they're accused of um, censorship. And if they do nothing, then they're also criticized for inaction. This election is going to play out on all the social platforms. It's just that right now, TikTok's got momentum. It's why anyone in politics is paying attention. We'll have a lot more on the US presidential election in the run up to the November vote. So if you don't want to miss those episodes, you can like, follow and subscribe to Al Jazeera wherever you're watching this video. I'll see you next week.